Now in this video we're going to consider three things. We're going to look at the ergonomics of design of a surgery. We're going to look at how your nurse can help you with this aspiration and retraction. And we're going to look at a safe way of instrument exchange. Where do all our bad habits that we have in dentistry come from? I personally think they come from dental school. It's a bit of a problem for them because they don't have enough nurses to go around to where, so that when they're doing their teaching to students, uh, the dentist can sit with a student nurse or a qualified nurse. They usually sit with a student dentist who, to be quite honest, doesn't know how to nurse. So you get your bad habits and your incorrect ways of sitting at dental school. This gets passed on to your first year at DF1 and then this gets passed on to your associate job and by that time it's totally in your psyche and you have your own practice and you design your surgery in exactly the same way as you did your dental student working. This is all wrong. I'd like to consider how we design our surgeries and in the light of the fact that 65% of dentists in this country and probably worldwide have bad backs, including myself, in the light of the fact that we in the UK have to conform to HTMO 105 and for the nurses and the dentists to work in a surgery with that in mind it becomes increasingly difficult and time consuming. And equally, we're all using magnification now. So I use 2.5 loops, then 3.8 sometimes, mostly 4.5 and occasionally a microscope. Now if you start to think about using all of those three things and trying to put them into operation to protect our backs, then I think we've got to completely rethink the design of a surgery. So we did this about 15, 20 years ago, even before HTML 105 came into operation. And we started to think, actually, do I need as a dentist any instruments on my side? And I think the answer is no, I don't. A surgeon in an operating theatre never picks up his own instruments. The scrub nurse does it for him. So we start to rethink, well, where should we put the tray of instruments, the aspirators, the spittoon, uh, the materials within the surgery? Most surgeries are designed absolutely classically with trays on the dentist's side, aspirator in the middle of the chair with the cuspidor, and um, materials on the side somewhere on the cabinetry. It starts beautifully at the beginning of the procedure, but at the end of the procedure, this is probably what it looks like, if you're anything like me. It's, we just chuck things back and it's just lying there. Now, two problems. One, the patient can see it and it doesn't look very nice. Two, my nurse, Sal, has got to come across and pick it up and clear it all up for me. There's a better way. Uh, I think we should clear this side completely. Sal. OK, well, many years ago when Martin and I first started doing this technique, I must admit I was slightly daunted because uh, from the nurse's point of view, you assume that the dentist will have the instruments because they know what they want to use and, uh, you know, we're just here to aspirate. But actually, this technique really in, it expands the, the role of the nurse and includes her in the whole procedure. So I have all of the instruments and the materials on my side of the surgery and I will pass instruments as required through treatment and give Martin all the materials that he needs. So everything comes from my side, he doesn't have to look up and disturb his concentration. If you're considering a new surgery, let's look at some ergonomic principles that you might like to think about to rethink the way you do a surgery. First of all, let's look at the light. Most lights in dental surgeries are positioned in front of the patient, so rays of light are coming down there and bouncing off that way. If I wear loops with a light, which I do normally, then the light is coming down that way and coming back to me. So why don't we actually have our lights behind us? And not many surgeries have a track on the ceiling that allows you to do that, but some do. Now let's look at the instrument tray and where it is. Most of the time it's on the dentist side. So the dentist has to reach, go to the mouth, go back to there, put it down again, take another instrument, go back to there, put it down again, repeatedly throughout the procedure. And if you're wearing loops, you're losing your focus, you're going from very bright light to ambient light of the surgery. So things are changing all the time in your eyes. This is very stressful. So why not think about actually getting rid of the tray from there, giving it to your nurse, and just letting her deal with it. <laughs> OK, so here we go. This is an, in an ideal world, we will place the instruments within arm's reach on a, a nice worktop or bracket table close to hand. Obviously, it's not an ideal world, so your surgeries might not be designed like that. So just look around, a little bit of lateral thinking. You might want to use the top drawer, which equally is as good. As long as it's within arm's reach and you can pass the instruments happily and comfortably, that will work fine.
Again, a lot of dental chairs have the aspirator mounted on the side of the chair and this means when I'm sitting working I'm having to twist myself to pick up the aspirator and then turn and work in the mouth. So again, ideally you have your aspirator placed in front of you. Now this is where Pareto principle comes into play, the 80-20 rule. Everything we're going to say to you in these videos is 80% of the time you can do it, 20% you can't. Now it's 100% if you've got your splatoon and your aspirator over there, you just have to accept it. So accept that some things are a compromise. But most of the stuff we tell you, you can do 80% of the time. The 20% that you can't, because dentistry is really difficult, some teeth are very difficult. How are you going to see the distal margin of an upper left seven uh, without maybe bending down to have a look? Just accept that that's your 20% and that's fine. And by doing this, I can literally just sit here with my loops, which we'll be demonstrating in a moment to you, um, and concentrate exactly on the tooth that I'm working on. Equally, some of the techniques we're going to show you means that Sally, or any nurse, is able to see in the mouth. Most nurses can't. They see the back of the dentist's hands, and we'll describe why that is the case. And therefore, some of the nurses have to stand up to get that vision down on to see in the mouth to get the water away. So if you'd like to contact us to learn more about the courses that we run, please look on our website at dynamicdentistry.co.uk. Contact us on info at dynamicdentistry.co.uk. We can also actually come to your practice and train the whole practice in how to do these techniques.